we are all scientists. And like scientists, we have one thing in common. We all like numbers. We are always after the elusive data set. We all want to be the one that's collected the most species. And I like you, I'm very similar. Um, but the difference is, mine has turned into a slight addiction. My name is Fadila, and I am addicted to dissected lionfish. And today I'm going to share with you the quest, my quest, for the 10,000 lionfish. So the lionfish, as this little picture shows, are, ooh, <laughs> are these invasive predators native to the Indo-Pacific. They're characterized by these beautiful red and white striped bodies and huge pectoral frilly fins, and they just float around very majestically. And it was this beauty that brought them over to the Caribbean as they were, here for, um, as they were brought over via the aquarium trade. But they are always almost the perfect invader. They pretty much eat any and everything. They live anywhere from less than one foot to more than a thousand feet of water. And when they reproduce, they can lay 10, 15,000 eggs. So if you thought bunnies were bad, think of them as bunnies on steroids. So, and the reason why I dissect lionfish is not that I enjoy basking in the ambience of dead stomach contents. It's because that's the way we can track their impacts. So based on what they eat, we can see what sort of impacts they're going to have on the environment. So I've spent the last four years working in Bonaire. It's a lovely paradise just in the Southern Caribbean. Crystal blue waters, very calm seas, and once you descend, there's the, the reef is just teeming with marine life. So on this day, last October, um, I went out with a group of volunteer lionfish hunters and our usual dive boat. So these volunteer lionfish hunters are pretty much some of my greatest friends on the island. And they're all very excited to be part of this experience. So they're all there on the boat, everyone's in good spirits, eating cakes and cookies, which are the food of lionfish hunters. And we're getting ready to go hunt lionfish. So I keep telling myself, today is the day we get to 10,000. So we get to the dive spot, we moor up the boat, and it's time to gear up. So for such a momentous occasion, you must do so in style. I traded in my nice practical five mil wetsuit, slip into my stylish bright pink skin and trade in my nice um, BCD, and I have one of those old school, almost fluorescent pink BCDs. I sort of make my way carefully over to the edge, put on my obviously pink fins, and like the national bird of Bonaire, the pink flamingo, I take a giant stride off the boat, together with the captain, Menno. So as we make our way down, there's so many fish and all this life all around us. A whale shark could have gone by and we couldn't care because we had one thing on our minds. We were looking for those frills. We're looking for those red and white fins somewhere tucked under in a coral edge and a coral edge or in some crevice. We were looking for lionfish. So we don't care what else is going on. So we're just there and then I hear a shake. Menno has seen a lionfish. So he signals to me, I say, okay, I see it. I prepare my spare and I descend carefully and trying to seek which was the best spot to hit him. And then we made eye contact, and that's where everything went downhill. And I started apologizing profusely and saying, I know you didn't mean to be here, but I of all people know how bad you are, but I need to kill you. But I'm not sure if I can. So I'm just there, man was looking at me, what are you doing? So I'm just there, I sort of have the spare, I think I aim, generally. It's, it's only on a sandy patch. There was no coral to be hit. I sort of aim. I close my eyes, say one last sorry, and I release my spare. And then there's a little flurry of sand as I've hit a little sand patch. And I stare there, looking, pull my spare back very tentatively, and surprise of the century, I did not shoot a lionfish. It was empty, so I sort of signaled to Manu, oops, sorry, but he's still there because there was a pressure because I know that every time I miss one, they're going to lay in, and that was part of the, everything that's going on. And I was also apologizing to the whole world for the lionfish I was about to miss. And so lion, um, Manu just swooped in, one shot, boom, bang, lionfish and the zookeeper, and we made our way. And as we continued to dive, I continued pointing out lionfish. I'm really, really good at pointing out lionfish. I just suck at killing them. And that's when it sort of made me realize my destiny is not to be a lionfish hunter. I cannot kill anything. Even if a mosquito is sucking my blood, can't kill it. But I do have a role as a scientist. 
as an educator and also as a coordinator. So the thing about lionfish is that it's not, it's not down to an individual, it's down to a community. And that's one of the things we have working for us in Bonaire. So I have all these volunteer lionfish hunters and it's through this community of divers and fishermen, dive operators, NGOs, scientists, general public, it's through this community effort that we can really have a chance against lionfish. And the key thing about lionfish management is that we need not only a community effort, but this sort of regional cooperative effort. Because no matter how well you manage your area, there's always going to be lionfish eggs coming in through the ocean currents. So this is one of the things that I've linked in that Lionfish management is only as strong as its weakest point of control. And for us to be successful in this sort of plight against the lionfish is that we need this community and cooperative effort. Thank you.